Good morning, everyone. I just realized I didn't have the mic on, but that's, I got a big mouth anyway, right? <laughs> yes. Those are some announcements, maybe? Okay. Does that make sense? Yes, ma'am. Okay, yes, thank you. Ma well, good morning and welcome to the well here at Central on this beautiful, beautiful Sunday morning. Our prayer focus for this week moving forward, we want to encourage everyone to start having some hard, open, and honest conversations, and we'll talk about that a little bit late, a little bit later. But we definitely want to encourage everyone to continue to, to pray for each other, pray for our community, pray for our world. And of course, we welcome everyone who has chimed in with us uh, today via Facebook Live. We will ask that you please um, like, add comments, let us know what you're thinking. This is something uh, new. Obviously, this is our first Sunday back since uh, the beginning of COVID-19. But we're going to continue to praise God and continue to encourage each other. Just a couple of uh, announcements very quickly. We want to remind everyone, uh, let the greeters sign you in versus your signing, because signing, we want to minimize contact and everything like that. Let them sign you in. Make sure you register for the blood drive. There's information on the table right to my right. And you can also go on to our website to get additional information or contact Linda Seegers. And if you can serve as a greeter next week, we ask that you please contact Sharon so she can get you, uh, get you signed up. And also we want to remind everyone, as you can tell, we're spaced out. We want to honor social distance. So please make sure that you keep the chairs where they're at. We, although we want to embrace each other, we want to encourage you to fist bump or elbow each other or give each other hair, air hugs. That's all right. But we want to definitely make sure that we're keeping everyone safe. Also, we would ask that you please uh, wear masks. Um, even if you don't like it, we want to keep everyone else safe indeed. And again, my friends, we like to welcome you to Central here, we welcome you to the well here at Central on this beautiful Sunday morning. We're really excited to be back. Even though it looks a bit different, um, we know that one thing never changes and uh, that's our, our Father. This first song that we're going to sing is called Graves into Gardens. And the bridge is so powerful and I feel like it's so important to meditate on these words in these times. We won't be singing. Um, you, you guys uh, can, can hum <laughs> under your masks. But we'll sing this. But if you would just listen to the words, the words that be on the screen in front of you. If you could just listen and meditate to those words because they're really powerful. Let me read them out to you now. It says, you turn mourning to dancing. You give beauty for ashes. You turn shame into glory. You turn graves into gardens. You turn bones into armies. And you turn seas into highways. You're the only one who can. And in this strange, strange time that we're living in right now, um, I pray that we hold on to those facts that our God is above anything that is going on in this country, in this world, any craziness that we're experiencing, any depression, any loneliness, God is above all those things and he can turn any morning into dancing. So let's sing this morning, well let's, let me sing this morning and uh, just meditate on those words as you, as you hear them. Search the world, but it couldn't fill me. A man's empty praise and treasures the faith and never enough. And you came along and put me back together. Every 
desire is now satisfied here in your love. Oh, there's nothing better than you. There's nothing better than you, Lord. There's nothing. Phrase. To show you my weakness, my failures and flaws, Lord, you've seen them all, you still call me friend. Cause the God of the mountain is the God of the valley.
your family, your children, and their children, and their children. May his favor be upon you, and a thousand generations. Your family, your children, and their children, and their children. May his favor be upon you, for a thousand generations. And your family, and your children, and their children, and their children. May his favor be upon you, and a thousand generations. And your family, and their children, and their children, and their children. May his presence go before you, and behind you, and beside you, all around you. us from our focus, which is you. Jesus, thank you. Thank you that you will never leave us, that you will never forsake us. Every day we can count on that you will bless us and your face will shine upon us. We receive grace from you. Endless endless grace and peace. And I declare peace in this time. That your love will reign over everything. And it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let us hear the gospel reading coming from Matthew, the ninth chapter, starting at verse 35, and I will be reading through the 10th chapter, verse 14. And it reads from the New Revised Standard Version. Then Jesus went about all the cities and villages, teaching in their synagogues and proclaiming the good news of the kingdom and curing every disease and every sickness. When he saw the crowds, he had compassion for them because they were harassed and helpless, like sheep without a shepherd. Then he said to his disciples, the harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. Therefore, I ask the Lord of the harvest to send out laborers into his harvest. Then Jesus summoned his 12 disciples and gave them authority over clean, unclean spirits to cast them out and to cure every disease and every sickness. 
These are the names of the 12 apostles. First, Simon, also known as Peter, and his brother Andrew, James, son of Zebedee, and his brother John, Philip and Bartholomew, Thomas and Matthew, the tax collector, James, son of Alphaeus, and Thaddeus, Simon the Canaanite, and Judas Iscariot, the one who betrayed him. These 12 Jesus sent out with the following instructions. Go nowhere among the Gentiles and enter no town of the Samaritans, but go rather to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. As you go, proclaim the good news. The kingdom of heaven has come near. Cure the sick, raise the dead, cleanse the lepers, cast out demons. You received without payment, give without payment. Take no gold or silver or copper in your belts, no bag for your journey, or two tunics or sandals or a staff, for laborers deserve their food. Whatever town or village you enter, find out who is in it, find out who in it is worthy, and stay there until you leave. As you enter the house, greet it. If the house is worthy, let your peace come upon it. But if it is not worthy, let your peace return to you. If anyone will not welcome you or listen to your words, shake off the dust from your feet as you leave that house or town. My brothers and sisters, this is the word of the Lord. My friends, whether we realize it or not, it is indeed high time for the church to proclaim and reclaim the good news of Jesus Christ in a world that is broken, hurt, and divided. We are indeed witnessing live more police brutality, racism, bigotry, hatred, oppression, and rhetoric that is creating outrage as well as bitterness among us. It seems like we are doomed for destructions, or I read on yesterday, it seems like we're heading into a civil war again. Yet, what we are witnessing is not strange to God, and I believe God is urging the church to step up in more ways than one. And I believe above and beyond every unrest, discomfort, and problems, Jesus Christ is our very best help. And the message of Jesus Christ is still our best solution. And we find that in this Matthew text where Jesus is encouraging his disciples to go out into the highways and the byways proclaiming the good news. And for those, who, or those of us who are Christians, we believe the good news is the salvation and the hope of Jesus Christ to all the world. But likewise, my friends, we must be aware that there are still diseases and things that are happening uh, uh, around us. And I think it's deeper than just COVID-19. I don't want to just talk about one thing or skip uh, something else, but the biggest disease that is plaguing us is division and the fact that we are afraid to have those hard conversations. We find in this particular text where Jesus didn't specifically tell them, but he was also making them aware that there would be some uncomfortable situations. In fact, he encouraged them if, if people was going to reject the message, don't waste your time getting in arguments. Don't waste your time causing further division, but simply shake off the dust of your sandal 
and move on. One of the things that I have learned not, at just, not just as a Christian, but as a pastor, is to proclaim the good news of Jesus Christ. To inform people, to tell people that there is hope, to tell people that there is salvation in Jesus. It's not my job to change anyone, contrary to what people may think the role is, uh, is of Christians or of pastors. Our job is simply to inform. It is God who gets the increase. It is God who is there to transform hearts. But at the same time, we must have a, a willing heart and some boldness with authority to tell the good news, even if people would reject us. And part of that good news, the one thing that I think that we fail to talk about in the church these days is Repentance. Jesus continued the message of John the Baptist where he also called the children of Israel, as we allude in this text, to repentance. And repentance simply means to turn away from our wicked ways, to turn and go in a direction that is meaningful, a, direct, a direction that is void of destruction. To move in a direction that provides hope. To move into a direction that promotes grace and love. That's part of having those hard conversations. Some of you may have received the newsletter uh, from our church or have been aware of our stance here at Central as well as the Global United Methodist Church. We immediately stood together to, to promote a, a, a encouragement and, and promote an awareness with COVID-19. We didn't skip a beat. Regardless of what some people may have thought, whether it was real, it was a hoax, we still moved to care and nurture for everyone that we possibly could care for. And now with all the things that are going on around us with the police brutality and what we deem to be racist situations as a church, we have committed ourselves to speaking truth to power. We've been having hard, open, and honest conversations as, as staff and as clergy. In fact, Meg, myself, and Thomas, we have agreed to be unpolitically correct, to tell the truth, not in a way where we're cutting each other down or anything like that, because here's, here's the reality, and let me, let me put it in a personal context. It is not my place to point out anybody's white privilege or white supremacy. It is not my job. I am not the voice of all black people at all. We are called to look within ourselves to, to see whether or not we are doing what is right and pleasing in God's sight. And likewise, it is not my place to tell every black person to stop being bigots or, or stop treating people who look different from us in an inhumane manner. Yes. We are called to call out things that divide us. We read that in, in the book of Galatians. You can read that in the fifth chapter where God is pointing out certain things that we should avoid. But above and beyond everything, as believers, we are called to call people towards love, towards grace. Because I still believe if we start to promote grace, and love, it would cover a multitude of sins. It starts from within first, my friends. We must repent of the things that cause, may cause division among our brothers and our sisters. We may have implicit or explicit 
raci racism or bigotry within ourselves. And we need to be honest with ourselves and recognize and acknowledge that that is not the will of God. We cannot be racist and bigots and then turn around and say that we love God. It is counterintuitive. And we must be honest about that. We must be open to listen to each other's stories. I'm under the persuasion that if we take the time to listen to each other more, we will find more things in common than we have different. And here's something that is a, a hardcore truth. Beneath our skin color, if we cut, if we're cut, we're all going to still bleed red. We are still called to be in kindred spirits with one another. And as families and as believers, yes, if we say we love each other, we should be willing to be honest with each other. One of the things that me and my wife are, are very serious about, I, uh, and I had this conversation with someone last week in, in the church, that what you see here at Central with us is what you get by and large. We don't come to church and put on this happy smile and laugh and, and let's be real, laugh in white folks' face and go home and be something else. No, we do not. We have been authentic and shall continue to be authentic. And it's not to impress people at Central, but it's, it is to, to render praise and honor to God in everything we do, whether we're in public or whether we're in secret. We don't mind calling family and friends to the carpet when they say things that are not cool where there's bigotry or there's hatred or there's anything else. We don't mind doing that. And along those same lines, and this is a message to all of us, when, you're, when you endeavor to share the good news of Jesus Christ, just as he told his disciples, there are going to be people who are going to reject you. There's going to be family and friends who reject you. There are going to be those that do not respect or honor the truth who are going to reject you. And here's the reality. There are going to be folks with hard hearts who are going to reject you. And again, Jesus gives us the remedy to that. Shake off the dust of your sandals, bid them farewell, and move on. Whether you realize it or not, even with people having a hard heart, you may have did something within them. You may have shaken them up to the point for, for God to deal with them at a later time. I believe if we endeavor to tell the good news of Jesus Christ, to talk about repentance, to offer salvation, to offer hope, people are bound to change. However, there is free will, even with God wanting to change the hearts of people. There is such thing as called, there is something that is called a reprobate mind. And what that simply means when God, through God's spirit, continue to encourage, convict, to chastise us, and move us, try to move us in the right direction, we can reject God's calling. And what I learned in clinical pastoral education, when we get to a habit where we don't want to hear sound judgment or we don't want to hear wisdom, which is something coming from God, something we said in CPE or a question we would ask someone, how is that working out for you? Because it's going to lead to destruction. It's going to lead to destruction within ourselves. We're going to find ourselves dealing with all kind of demons and all kind of things that are going to make us uncomfortable. And not uncomfortable in a good way. 
That bitterness and all those things are going to eventually lead to sickness, bad health. The need, I say, is going to cause us to be isolated because no one is going to deal with you. We do not, my friends, live on an island. We are called to take care of each other. We are called to share that good news with each other. And again, we are called to speak truth to power. And here's the great thing about all of that, my friends. Just as Jesus gave the word to his disciples in this Matthew text, Jesus is still giving the same word to us, and it's called authority. God has given us the authority not only to heal people by our words, and that can be from sickness, it can be from racism, it can be from bigotry, it can be from all other harshness or oppression, anything that causes us turmoil or causes division. We have the ability to speak to all different types of things that cause us bitterness to speak to things that cause us discomfort and unrest. We have that authority to the power of the Holy Spirit. We, don't, we do not have to try to figure it out or do it in our might. I've had so many people ask me, Derek, what do I need to do to make things better? I can give you a long list of things that I think you should do but it's up to you to know what it is that you are supposed to do. And we can discover that first by reading our scriptures, by meditating, not just picking it up and, and reading it just to get it over with or, or to check off a box in the day. Yep, I did my devotion. I'm talking about spending some time in God's word. Matter of fact, if you're not familiar with the term Lectio Divina, I encourage you to learn about that. And that simply means reading every single word of a passage. Every word. Meditate on that word. Move to the next word. So forth and so on. God has not stopped speaking to us through scriptures. It is not antiquated. It is still very real. Obviously, we have to use, we have to put it in, our, in the right context. I do believe scripture is contextual. Also, we can pray. Pray and ask God to show us the way. God, God is willing and, and waiting to hear from us, my friends. God has not stopped speaking whether we realize it or not. Maybe the noise within ourselves and the noise going on around us is drowning the voice of God out. My grandmother used to say sometimes you might have to get in your prayer closet, literally or figuratively, to spend time with God. You may have to be up at night by yourself while your family or your friends are, are sleeping, walking and pacing and spending time with God in prayer. God wants to lead us in the right directions, my friends. We can spend time, more time, around like-minded people. Now let me back up and say this, like-minded meaning people who are positive. People who are working for the common good. If you're around a bunch of busybody or, or people who want to, 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 to talk about drama and trivial things, it might not be the right crowd for you because here's the thing, misery loves company. Again, you may lose some family and friends along the way. But it doesn't stop there, my friends. We can read scriptures. 
We can pray, we can be among the believers, we can do all those things, but personal holiness pushes us to apply it to social holiness. We have to enact and embody those things by showing mercy to people, being kind to people, feeding the hungry, doing the best we can do to speak to homelessness, to deal with those who are being oppressed, to deal with those who are struggling with mental illness, to deal with those who are sick or at home or those who are bereaving. My brothers and sisters, again, we are in this together. We are called to nurture each other. That's the good news that is lived out. Jesus wasn't just calling his disciples just to go and tell a message. No, he was leading them to tell them the message in hope of people being transformed, starting again with repentance, accepting the fact that we are heirs and joint heirs of God. And for those of us who subscribe to Christianity, we are heirs and joint heirs. Jesus Christ, who is our Alpha and our Omega, our beginning and the end, and everything in between. Jesus is our all and all, my friends. We are called to be the light of the world. We are called to be the difference that we want to see in the world. We are called to be the church alive and well. And here's the thing that I want to remind us. The church is not the building. We are the church. People in the world are the church. And as that song says, we are the church together. We are called to share the good news. We are called to encourage each other. We are called again to have hard, open, and honest conversation. Talking about racism, bigotry, oppression, those are, those, we can't make those taboo words anymore. There's unrest that has happened all around us. Some of us may still be angry, outraged, may feel like we want to take the world on by ourselves, but God is not calling us to do that. God is calling us to trust God, to allow God to lead us in the right direction. But likewise, we, there's no time for idleness. We can't sit around twiddling our thumbs trying to figure it out other than waiting on God to lead you. And I've said this uh, in, a, in another message. Yes, sometimes we may have to be silent to listen to what God is calling us to do, but I do not believe that is God's will for us to continue to stay silent. We can't. We absolutely cannot do it anymore. Again, let's be the difference that we want to see in the world. And I agree with, with Carnell West, who is one of my fraternity brothers, Alpha Phi Alpha Fraternity Incorporated, the greatest fraternity in the world. Cornell West said it elegantly in the, the politics of the gospel. Tom Piella sent it to me a couple of days ago, and it was very profound. It was an interview with Cornell West and a, another spiritual leaders, and they were on different political spectrums of things, but they managed to agree to disagree on a lot of things. And this is one thing that I think they agreed, agreed on. And West said this, Christian witness has got to cut deeper than politics. It, co it comes down to the relation between the cross and the flag. No nation will ever exhaust the cross. No politician will ever exhaust, exhaust the kind of truth we as Christians are to bear in the world. 
We believe in witness over and against political power. Whatever our thoughts are, whatever position we take politically, as Christians we are called to tell the good news above and beyond everything, even if it's uncomfortable for us, even if it's uncomfortable in the circles that we walk. Again, there's no time for idleness. And in closing, as Jesus encouraged his disciples in this Matthew text, I'm encouraging us. Let us hold fast to our confession of faith as believers with hope. We are a people who are with hope. And our hope comes in Jesus Christ. Let us serve as good stewards of God's grace. Let us learn to encourage and uplift each other, especially during these trying times. We are in this together. And let us take heart because we are not alone. God is with us. And my sisters and brothers, I love you. And there is nothing you can do about it. In the name of the Father, Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Let us now stand for our benediction. God, we adore you. God, we love you for your presence. God, we love you for calling us to be your hands and feet in a sin-sick and a broken world. Empower us to be the church that you want to see in the world. Empower us to be agents of change and agents of hope. Now, by the grace of God, the love of Jesus Christ and the communion of the Holy Spirit Rest, rule, and abide with us both now and forever. And all of God's people say, Amen. Thank you.
Lord bless you and keep you. May his face shine upon you. Be gracious to you. Have a wonderful rest of your Sunday. See you soon.